I find it so befitting um, the fact that uh, she was singing that, you know, I need thee. And she's making it personal, you know, because um, I, mean, I mean, he's a personal God, you know, and he even said it in his word, blessed are the poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they, uh, in other words, blessed are they that understand that within myself, I cannot sustain life. Within myself, I understand that I am corrupt and I'm in need of an incorruptible savior. But it doesn't just stop there. I'm also in need of an incorruptible Lord. Because if you get saved, what is he saving you from? But that's not my message, though. My message actually is identity crisis. Who's your daddy now? Now, I know that's kind of, you know, funny. You know, when you first, you know, I thought about it. Because, you know, now I'm in my late 30s. So, you know, I grew up in like the late, mid-90s, late 90s, early 2000s. And, and if anybody who's in my age bracket, they know that, you know, when you were sick from or home from school, uh, there was a program on television called Maury. Okay? And on this television program called Maury, it was always about, you know, these children and whether or not this person or this man is their father or not, right? And so you would always hear, oh, uh, in the case of little Tommy, the paternity test comes back, you are the father, or you are not the father. And then, all, and then you see them, oh, Lord, oh, you. you know, when they find out that, you know, that, that, that the person is not the father, then, oh, Lord, then who is it? Who is it, you know? And so, you know, growing up, you know, as a kid, you know, you, I mean, you're looking at this kind of stuff, and it's like, you know, how, how, how unfortunate it is, you know, for the children, for the babies, you know, who did not ask to be here, but are made spectacles, you know, all because of the bad decisions and the bad, cho and the bad choices that the parents made, you know. And so I thought about that, and, I'm, and, I, and I thought about how even in the Sabbath school lesson, and uh, if you were not here for Sabbath school, you missed a treat, because uh, Elder James Hamlet did a wonderful job uh, facilitating uh, you know, this week's Sabbath school, and he talked about um, how Christ, you know, how he rescues us you know, in, 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 in Ephesians, but I want to focus on the particular scripture and it is found in Ephesians 2 and verse 3, I mean, verse 2 and 3, okay? And it says, Wherein in time past ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince and the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we all had our conversation in times past, in the lust of the flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and the mind and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath. We talked about that, even as others. Let me pause right here. This was where I began to study this week, but I'm going to pause right here and I'm going to give space and honor to the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and I'm going to pray. Our Father and our God, we thank you once again for allowing us to to come together in your sanctuary. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to expound upon your word. Lord, let your spirit reign supreme. Lord, I want to decrease because I am nothing more than corruptible flesh that if, if you don't come back, I will one day die and return back to the earth. But Lord, I need your spirit to speak through me so that way I do not lead your people astray for you said, woe to the shepherd that leads your sheep astray. And Lord, I do not want to be found guilty of that accusation, of that sin. 
So, Lord, use me for your purpose and for your glory. And when you're done, sit me down. Into thine hands I commend my spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. So, we look here in Ephesians 2, 2 and 3. It is ta- Paul here is explaining to the church here in Ephesus that in the time past, yeah, these are new converts, right? So, in the time past, they walked according to the prince in the power of the air, according to the course of this world, okay? And the spirit that now worketh in the people of this world is the spirit of the children of disobedience, right? And then it says, among them, among whom also we all had our conversation in times past, in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. So what Paul here is saying is that in times past, before our conversion, we were just as the children of this world who walk according to this world. And he names them as the children of disobedience, and then later on in verse 3, the children of wrath. Now, he names them the children of wrath, but understanding the language of family, you have children, and then you have to have parents, right? Okay, so if there's children, then there has to be a father of wrath, right? So who's the father of wrath? Let's go to Ezekiel 2, I'm sorry, Ezekiel 28 and 14. Ezekiel 28 and 14, it says, Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth, and I have set thee so. Thou wast upon the mountain, the holy mountain of God. Thou was walked, thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Thou was perfect in thy ways from the day that thou was created till iniquity was found in thee. By the multitude of thy merchandise, they have filled the midst of thee with violence. And thou hast sinned. Therefore, I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God, and I will destroy thee, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. Now, there's two or three key passages or phrases in here that link up to what we read in Ephesians. Remember, we read the children of disobedience and the children of wrath. Key word, wrath, okay? If you look at going to Ezekiel, when he talks about the anointed cherub that covered, and we know that this anointed cherub that covered was Lucifer, right? The anointed cherub that covered was Lucifer, and he was perfect until iniquity was found in his heart, right? And then also in 16, it says, by the multitude of thy merchandise. So basically, it's using language like uh, what he was selling, okay? You've, have you ever heard this, the phrase where it says that, oh, um, somebody is, uh, says a statement and then somebody says, oh, I'm not buying that. That's what he's talking about. So basically, what he's saying here is that, like, his philosophy, his thought pattern filled him up with violence, with wrath, okay? So there's your father of wrath because he was perfect till what? Iniquity was found in his heart, okay? And because of that, what did the Lord say? He said that, therefore, I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God, so out of the presence of of the Lord, and I will destroy thee, O covering cherub, from from the midst of the stones of fire. So there is where you have your origin of violence. There is where you have your origin of wrath. Later on, John in Revelation 
chapter 12, verse 7, it says, And there was a war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels and prevailed not. Neither was their place found anymore in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out. That old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. So we understand from this passage that John, through the Holy Spirit, is giving him insight as to where this, 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 this being, this father of wrath, what happened in heaven and how his actions, how his merchandise filled him up with violence. But not just him, but a third of the angels had bought in to the lies that he was spewing, that he was selling. Okay? And it got to a point where there was no place left for him and for his angels. And he was cast out. Jesus, is, Jesus himself confirms this when he states in the Gospel of Luke, to Luke 10 and 18, and he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. In fact, Jesus gets even more explicit in the Gospel of John when he addresses the religious leaders in John 8 and 39 when it says, They answered and said unto him, Abraham is our father. Y'all remember that? When he said, Abraham is our father, Jesus said unto them, okay, if ye were Abraham's children, you would do the works of Abraham. But now ye seek to kill me, a man that hath told you the truth, which I have heard of God. This did not Abraham. So Abraham didn't tell them the truth. Abraham just believed God, right? Remember, he's the father of righteousness by faith, right? Because he believed God, right? And so in Hebrews, it says that because he believed God, it was counted unto him as what, Sister Dahlia? Righteousness. And righteousness is what? Right doing. Right doing with what? What, what, what are you measuring yourself against? Exactly. Or the transgression of the law. So the law is that reference point. That's what you're measuring yourself against. Right? Amen. So, Jesus said here that he goes on explicitly and he says, but now... Ye seek to kill me, a man that hath told you the truth, which I have heard of God. This did not Abraham. Ye do the deeds, uh oh, of your father. And they said to him, We be not born of fornication. We have one father, even God. So let me stop right there. Because remember, you know, this is God. Emmanuel with us, and he is telling them about themselves. He's telling them the truth, the unadulterated truth, right? And what and they respond with an accusation, right? They well, we were born with uh, fornication because they're alluding to the fact that his mother was not married to Joseph when she con when, when, you know when she had him. So they're kind of hinting to the fact that, you know, uh, we weren't born, you know, by fornication. You know, our mother and our father was married, you know, when we, you know. And, you know, Jesus, he answers them and says, if God were your father, because look, because look, they're still looking naturally, right? And instead of him stooping down and, and coming back into the natural, he's like, nope, I'm going I'm, I'm to stay right up here in the spiritual. Why? Because the kingdom of God is not of this world. So he stayed spiritual. And what did he say? He said, you do the deeds of your father. Then they said, unto, they, they, then they said to him, 
We be not born of fornication. We have one father, even God. Jesus said unto them, if God were your father, ye would love me. For I proceeded forth and came from God. Neither came I of myself, but he sent me. Why do ye not understand my speech? Even because ye cannot hear my word. You are not of your father. Okay, I'm sorry, excuse me. Ye are of your father, the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning. He was a murderer, I'm going to say that again, from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him when he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. Okay, so I'm going to stick a pin right there. He is, a, he is a liar and the father of it. All right, now let's reason, people of God. What is a lie? A lie is the opposite of what? Okay, biblically, what is truth? The word of God. Also, what else, what else is truth? Jesus is truth. I am the way, the truth, and the light. What else is truth? The commandments. The Bible says that the, that the commandments are truth. So, if he's the father of lies, and the opposite of lie is truth, opposite of the lie is the law. Correct? And so he's the father of lies, right? That's what, that, that's what Jesus said right here. It says that he is the father of lies, right? So that means that he's the father of the transgression of sin. Y'all see that? Because sin is what? The transgression of the law. The transgression of what? Truth. So if I am transgressing it, if I'm cutting across it, then that means that I'm lying. Because everything else is a lie. Correct? If, if the law of God is the truth, then everything else is what? False. So anything else outside of the law of God, what thus say of the Lord is what? False. So because of that, we know where it originated. It originated in Lucifer, who then became Satan. Now, let's look at the origin of the children of this world. Genesis 1 and 26 says, And God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over the all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And God blessed them. And God said unto them, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. Okay, so this is God creating man after his image and after his likeness. And it also it says in um, 1 Timothy 2 and 13, it says, For Adam was formed first, then Eve, and Adam was not deceived, but the woman was deceived in transgression. So we see here that at first, we started off under the grace and mercy of God. We were created in his image and in his likeness. But when it came to that faithful test, the test that shall we live by everything that proceeds out of the mouth of God, meaning that you can eat of every tree, 
of the garden. Just don't eat of this one right here. Because the day that you eat of it, you're going to die. Because I'm life. Everything you see here, I'm paraphrasing though, but everything you see here is by my word. Everything you, you're standing on, my word. Think about that for a second. Now, this is God talking to Adam. Because remember, he said, let there be light, and then there was light. The first words recorded were a command, and the light came. He formed the earth. He said, let the dry land come forth, and it came forth. So as he's given the instruction to Adam, everything you see here was created before you got here. And matter of fact, you are the crowning jewel of creation because you are as close as, it, as, it, as you can be to me, as you can be without being the creator, right? Because he said, I'm going to put my image and likeness in you. And even to the point where if you go to Luke um, chapter 3, uh, and I'm not going to read the, the entire one, though, but Luke is actually recounting the, the righteous line of Jesus from Joseph all the way back to Adam. And I want to highlight in 3 and 38, and it says, now remember, this is the righteous line now, which was the son of Enos, or Enoch, which was the son of Seth, which was the son of Adam, which was the son of God. So Adam was considered before sin the son of God, right, people of God? Before sin, he was considered the son of God. But in Romans 5 and 12, it says, Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. So we talked about that in, in Sabbath school this morning. We talked about the fact that um, Satan is the originator of sin. He's the instigator of sin. But we as human beings, we are given a choice, right? Well, let me back up. We, because of Adam's sin, we are given the sin nature, as Sister Dahlia said in, in Sabbath school, we are given that sin gene genetically because of Adam's sin. But we still have a choice. God gives us a choice. That's why in the Bible, he says, choose ye this day whom ye will serve, right? So why did I say all that? Because a lot of times we like to say like what uh, Elder Hamlin said, you know, what, um, now this is before my time though, but I remember like my parents used to say, this guy named Flip Wilson used to say, oh, the devil made me do it. You know, oh, the devil made me do it. And it's like, no. There are, there are certain situations where the devil is actively involved in oppressing God's people, but a lot of the situations that befall us come from us being driven away by our own lusts and affections, right? So, we understand that because of Adam's choice, because remember, the woman was deceived. But Adam was not deceived. He chose. He, look, he looked at the circumstances, and instead of him leaning towards God, he looked at his wife. And it was like, oh, let me go ahead and take that. And then as soon as God came walking in the cool of the day, he said, Adam, where art thou? Ain't God something. He didn't come saying, Adam, you ate it. And then thunder and lightning came down. He came walking, saying, Adam, where are you? Now, we all know that God knew where he was. But see, God is putting it on record so that way we understand what kind of person he's like. See, a lot of people miss all that. You know, they think that, oh, God is just this person that's just waiting to strike you down. No. He wants to show first the worlds, listen, my name's going to be vindicated here. And then, secondly, 
I'm going to show them either why I either chose them or why they are rejecting me. Okay? We see that all the time. We see that with Job, right? He said, hast thou considered my servant Job? He wasn't throwing Job under the bus. He already knew what Job was going to do. He was just showing the sons of God and the unfallen worlds, this is why I chose him. This is why I said that, you know what, Satan, Job belongs here, not you. So, getting back to what I was saying about the children of this world, we first started off, right? Everything was given to us. All we had to do was just do what thus saith the Lord. But what did we do? We disobeyed. And because of that, now we become the children of this world. Because we did not take the word of our creator, of our everlasting father. We took the word of a different father. The father of iniquity. The father of violence. The father of wrath. So, in Romans 5 and 12, it says, Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. For until the law sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed when there is no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression for, I mean, yeah, tr transgression, who is the figure of him that was to come? But not as the offense, so also is the free gift. For if through the offense of one many be dead, much more the grace of God and the gift of by grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, hath abound unto many. And not as it was by one that sinned, so is the gift, for the judgment was by one to condemnation. But the free gift is of many offenses unto justification. For if by one man's offense death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of the grace of of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. So we understand that by our disobedience we became the children of this world, but thank God that He had a plan of salvation for us because Isaiah 9 and 6 says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Amen? Amen. So thank God that Jesus Christ is our Everlasting Father. Some translations say that he is the Father of Everlastingness, or eternity flows from him. He says, believe on him as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Amen. So to be children of the light, Matthew 18 and 1, I'm, and I'm wrapping up here. Children of the light, at the same time, Matthew 18 and 1 says, at the same time, came the disciples unto Jesus saying, who is the greatest in the kingdom? So these are, these are the closest people that are walking with Christ. They're asking who is going to be the greatest in the kingdom? And Jesus called a little child unto them and set him in the midst of them and said, Verily I say unto you, except ye be converted and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child, the same is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Whosoever shall receive one such little child in my name receiveth me. 
But whosoever shall offend one of these little ones which believe in me, it were better for him that a millstone were hung, hanged about his neck and that he were drowned in the depth of the sea. So right here, Jesus is telling us how we become children of God, children of the light, except we be what? Converted and become as a little child. See, a little child, I think about like a little toddler, you know, not like an adolescent, as some of us Christian, our Christian lives are. And that's a whole other sermon in itself. You know how you get to the adolescent where you think you, where you, think you know something, you know, like Jairus, you know, and, and Mark when he said, come, Father, uh, God, you know, lay your hand on my daughter. And, and Jesus just went with him, you know. But what I'm trying to say here is, is that as a little child, a toddler, what are they looking for? They know that I can't clothe myself, I can't feed myself, I can't protect myself, I cannot provide provisions for myself. I need somebody bigger than me, greater than me, outside of me, to take care of all that stuff. That's why, that's why God, that's why Jesus said, God, Jesus, that's why he said, you have to be like this little child. Amen? And the last few things I want to say here is that what we talked about today is we talked about the children of God, which are the children of what? Obedience. Because they keep the commandments of God and they have the faith of Jesus. But I just wanted to kind of bring it to you from a present truth standpoint, because I mean, I always want to bring it to present truth. And I, and I looked at some, some stats here. Because remember, the, 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 the title of the sermon today is Identity Crisis, Who's Your Daddy? And it says, research shows that when fathers are involved in the household, the children are two times more likely to go to college, 80% less likely to spend time in jail, 75% time, uh, 75% less likely to experience teen pregnancy. Now, you have that side. You have the benefits of that, right? Now, on the negative side of that, when the dad isn't there, it's a different picture. See, in father absent homes, you have 71% of high school, of all high school dropouts come from a fatherless home. And then 90% of homeless and runaway children come from fatherless homes. So you're more prone to run away from the house if there isn't a father figure there. So this is why in the Bible it says, and ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nature and admonition of the Lord. Because as parents, we do not want to be guilty of what Satan is guilty of, and that is stirring up wrath, not only in ourselves, but in our, but in our, in our children, in our posterity. We don't want to be fall victim to that. And so that is why we must remember who we belong to. You know, the, the pen of inspiration says that at the end of time, right before Jesus comes, there's going to be two classes of people. One, that keep the commandments of God. They are obedient to the creator. And the other ones, that keep the commandments of men. They are the children of disobedience. So let us remember in the church as we walk this walk, as we endeavor to reflect the glory back to the, to the Father, let's remember that 
Jesus Christ is our father. And how we, how we exude his character is through having love one to another. Amen? Let us all stand. It's, thank you. Amen. The appeal today is for any soul out there who at one point or another might have fell out with the Lord and, wants, and they want to come back to the Lord and to be called a son of God or a daughter of God. Your time is now. Jesus says, behold, I stand at the door and I knock. If any man open the door and allow me to come in, I will sup with him. The thing about being the children of light, the children of obedience, is the fact that you are bowing in humble submission to the will of God. You are saying to him, Lord, I need you as my Savior, but I also need you as my Lord. I need you to reign over me because without you, my foot will slip. I need your word. All right. Anyone? All righty, let's pray. There's a special prayer for Sister uh, Gracine Shepherd. She has a reaction to a medicine that has broken her out. We're going to pray for her. Our Father and our God, Lord, we thank you for this word on today, Lord. We thank you for you being present, Lord. I ask, Lord, that if there was anything that I've said that is contrary to your word, Lord, forgive me. It is not my intention to lead your people astray because I am in need of a Savior. I'm in need of you. And Lord, I'm asking you, Lord, to please bless your people. Let them know and encourage them that you are their Father. You are their provider. You are Jehovah Jireh. You provided yourself. You provided provisions for us. You take care of us every day. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have need of, your hands have already provided. So, Lord, help us to remember that. Help us to remember that it is your, your spirit that seals us to the day of redemption. It is our inheritance as children of God. And Lord, if there are any of the children of disobedience, let them come out of her, my people, and be not partakers of her wrath and her fornication. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Amen.